Sounds like someone played too much Quick Bench. Hey, hello everyone, Pally Tom here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. In today's video, we have landed upon Deathwing. Deathwing is my all-time favorite character in the Blizzard universe. I absolutely love him. He's basically just a dragon that went to sleep underground because he didn't want to be bothered by anybody. Then we woke him up and he got mad and he wrecked everybody's stuff. <laughs> Ever since I had my first conversation with the Heroes developer, I was like, can you please consider adding Deathwing into the game? And my ideas became more outlandish as I, be as I became more desperate to just have the character in. They started saying, you know, well, he's kind of the biggest dragon. That's his thing. I don't really know if we can fit him into a game. And I was like, well, why don't you just make him a map, dude? We can ride on his back like the Spine of Deathwing fight. If it's good enough for WoW, you better believe it's good enough for us. Tim had a cool idea too, where it would be a five lane map at the beginning of the game and periodically Deathwing would go through and cause, you know, a little cataclysm on one of those lanes. So a five lane map becomes a four, becomes a three, becomes a two. And then at the end, all of the other lanes are destroyed and you find yourself and an ARAM. I think that's an awesome idea too. He was finally, finally, finally added into the game as a playable hero on December 3rd, 2019. As of right now, his win rate is 51.45% and his popularity is 9.66%. Both of those are pretty healthy numbers. As a lot of you know that have been following the channel for a long time, typically when new heroes come out, I don't play them too much at their release. You can still spot a few really underleveled heroes in here. For instance, May. Mephisto, Malganis, Maiev. Maybe I just have something against Imps. Uh, Deckard Kane only has levels because we're prepping him for A through Z. Uh, Anduin was sitting at level four for a really long time. Never really played Phoenix. But Deathwing was the exception. Most of the levels that you see on this character I achieved within the first week and a half, two weeks of the character being released. I was in love back then he had such an aggressive play style he would jump into the thick of things and just heal with dragon soul be spreading around damage with incinerate and then radiating more damage around him with heat wave deathwing was all about the melee stance all the time no need to switch to anything else just being hyper aggressive going in and doing as much damage as possible. And then when things looked like they were about to maybe cause you to die, all you do is cataclysm away and leave behind death and destruction in your wake. Dude, it was so good. If you guys have never seen any of our Deathwing videos on the channel, I absolutely loved the melee play style. It was so good. However, since then, here's just a few of the things that have changed to uh, kind of force you away from playing Deathwing that way. Since released, he has lost a combined 450 HP, which may not seem like a lot until you start to consider his armor plating that protects him more when he's at high health. If you can get through that first armor plating faster, Deathwing becomes a lot more squishy. And believe me, He's pretty squishy right now. He had his health regen reduced by about two per second. I think I rounded it up for that. Incinerate damage went from 85 baseline to 70 baseline. Cataclysm damage, our ultimate, went from 12 periodic damage to nine. And that's not that bad until you consider that the upgrade for this ultimate that you can take at level 10 used to give a 150% increased damage. 150, it's only 80 now. And that's not even taking into account the fact that they increased the energy cost of incinerate, but also reduced the damage at the same time. They were trying to buff the ranged build by doing the opposite to Lava Burst, reducing its energy cost and increasing its damage. But I still think Lava Burst is super underwhelming. Let me show you what I mean. So remember, Deathwing caused a cataclysm in WoW. He burnt everything beneath his shadow. He caused literal biomes to change. He split the barons into two pieces. But his Q just scratches a minion wave. <laughs> I used all of my energy there and I barely have a few dead minions to show for it. If we get into range stance, everything he does has this like really weird delay on it. 
So yeah, that is dealing some decent periodic damage, and that is 49 damage a second at level one. But realistically, someone's gonna move this, someone's gonna move out of this right away. So then you have to be like, okay, well, I'll just stun them inside of this with this stun that also has a delay. And then, oh, this is when we really start to capitalize on our damage. After this delay, hold on, <laughs> cool down. <laughs> After this ability with a delay, and this ability with a delay, I can then use this ability with a delay to breathe even more fire on them. Or, you know, alternatively, melee form. Jump in, let's fight. Boom, chomping, spreading fire all around me. Oh shit, I'm about to die, fly away. That is so much so much more engaging but unfortunately with a lot of these talent changes let me show you uh <laughs> what deathwing's talent diversity looks like right now or should i say lack of talent diversity at 4 13 and 16 every single build just goes for the fire breath now i don't want to sound like i'm being a bummer but when i picked up deathwing again to start prepping for this video i was just not having much fun at all because I was reminiscing about how much fun I used to have on this character. However, once I kind of put that out of my mind and played a few more games with the Fire Breath build, I was having a good time. You do have to think about the environment a lot more. You want to fight people in choke points because, let's be honest, it's a big tell. There's a big delay. If someone wants to dodge Fire Breath, usually all they need to do is walk about two steps, either up or down. <laughs> I do like the guys that walk the full length of the fire breath, though. Those are the real MVPs. But by the end of it, I was having an okay time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Dragonshire map today. The Frilly Team, Deathwing, Vala, Brightwing, Medivh, and Mephisto. The enemy team, Nova, Malfurion, Abathur, Gizlo, and Tassadar. I imagine the majority of my gameplay is going to be making sure Gazlo just doesn't split push to his heart's content. However, the siege damage of Deathwing is astronomically low, so we'll see that goes. Our Q ability is Molten Flame. This is a straight line still shot with a very long charge up time. It's going to drain a lot of your energy every second that you're channeling, but a lot of our talents are going to help mitigate that effect and also boost the, uh, the damage effectiveness of this ability quite a bit. Our W ability while we're in melee stance is an AoE around our character to deal damage. Our E ability dashes us towards a target to deal damage. So for instance, I didn't hit anybody there, but I was gonna say this Tassadar, this Malfurion, we could potentially jump in on. We can also swap our stance over to ranged if we hit our one key. This will change our W into a pool of lava that we can leave down on the ground. And it turns our E ability into a skill shot stun in the shape of a V. <laughs> Which, as you can imagine, a V shape could make skill shots a little difficult to land. This fight's still going on in the middle lane, so we will re-enter. I probably should have re-entered from the other side. Uh, no one's soaking bots, so I'm going to head down there. I'll do that. We do get healing from region globes and sippy cups, but our Brightwing is not going to be able to heal us at any point in today's match. The only healer that can heal Deathwing, and I might be wrong in saying this, but I think I'm right, it's the only one, would be a W build Alexstrasza that is able to uh, complete her quest and actually spawn in globes to help out the cause. I'm gonna stand on this right away. We have our Mephisto up in the top lane. Hopefully he could stand on that. The enemy team's Gazlo did back up and get that mercenary camp for his side. There it is, there it is, it finally landed. I hope this doesn't go well for him, but I've learned early on in my life never to underestimate a Gaslo, especially one that has a Tassadar on the way as well. Totally body block there, but I am going to start to back up and get to safety. Uh, no one on our team has made it down to the bottom lane yet this game. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use my fly. This is how we actually regenerate our HP. We fly up into the skies, sit up here for a short time, contemplate life, Watch all of our buildings die as Gazlo's pushing in. 
and then we can re-emerge just like this. However, when we land on the ground, there is a short cooldown with our ability. Do you think Val is gonna help me at all? <laughs> Jesus, dude, come on, I'm right fucking here. All right, we did manage to hit him with the big heartburn breath. Get him out of here. Get him back at least momentarily. Unfortunately, Gazlo does have a sippy cup, which means he's going to be re-emerging here pretty soon. I'm going to leave bottom Tavala for a bit. I can rotate up here, get this globe, get this globe too. I do have a tendency of sitting in melee stance a little bit too long. That's something I've been trying to correct over the course of my practice games, just trying to get used to actually weaving in range stance a little bit more. The Deathwing that I knew and loved basically sat in melee stance the entire game, so I'm still very, very used to doing that. The stun does hit Gazlo, but I didn't follow up with light, with uh, Fire Breath in time. Looks like there is a pretty big fight going on in the middle lane. We have a mercenary camp pushing in with us here. Gazlo once again trying to hold the bush. Let's just put some fire on him. He is going to have to move up. Unfortunately, there is no building there to help deal some damage to him. We do hit him with another flame. The fight in the middle lane still going on. Mephisto rotating down to us, though, is going to push him out of this area. I am thinking about flying up to the top lane. Actually, already started it. Didn't quite get the shrine in time. Didn't quite get the shrine in time. There we go. I'm going to head up top. I hate the Deathwing has to have vision for where he lands. Bro, if I want to jump in on someone's pool party, do I really need to see the pool? I could just land in the backyard. You know what I'm saying? This also bothers me with Skyfall though, our level seven talent. This talent allows us to throw meteors down from the air on our adversaries. And each of these meteors actually heals us for a small percentage of our overall health bar. Abathur popping my armor shield there, that certainly sucks. Armor on Deathwing comes with plates and you can track those on our health bar. As we lose plates, we're going to be losing 10 armor at a time. So we have three plates right now, that means we have 30 armor. Let's go ahead and cap this as our team was taking bottom. We can get those plates back by flying into the sky and healing with our mount ability. We cannot heal in the well. We do not get plates back from region globes. The only way of getting them back is going to heal. The enemy team is starting to respond to the dragon push in the middle lane. I'm going to rotate down to my team in the bottom lane and see if they want to keep pushing this. Bottom is the most important lane on this map because it has the most merc camps that push towards the core here. Uh, but typically you do want to clear middle first because middle makes it, uh, if the enemy doesn't have anything to fall back to, middle makes it much, much easier to actually contest the dragon. If I can get Sippy Cup here, we're going to call that a victory. That's two walls down and a sip. Beautiful. The friendly team level nine to the enemy team's 10. I'm not going to be able to do much of anything else with this. Uh, I think after this happens, maybe I can get one more Q on the middle wave, push that back one more time. If Gazel was still pushing up, potentially we could have knocked him into our base there. But it looks like that is not going to happen. I, it really bothers me that Deathwing does not have more siege damage. And I'm going to be honest, I haven't recorded my intro for this game yet, so I may have talked about that at nauseum. But it just seems so weird that the being that brought on the Cataclysm isn't more competent at actually killing off minions in any capacity. In fact, especially at low levels, this does change a little bit as we get into high levels, but especially at low levels, I can burn my entire energy bar on a minion wave, and that minion wave will likely not die. <laughs> And it's just actually infuriating. I'm getting some of my armor plates back right now. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, we're okay. No enemies in sight, so we can land here. Here's a full lightning or a full uh, fire breath. I keep thinking I'm Diablo. And these guys do have the Abathur hat on top of it. But isn't that a disgrace? <laughs> I didn't even kill the archers. I can can't, I cannot get over that. Please, Blizzard. Give him a talent where if he picks up a globe, it increases his siege damage for 15 seconds or something. Nothing too crazy. I'm not asking to be Asmodan. What I am asking is to be able to clear a wave somewhat effectively. Now I can walk up to this and I can use my W and that does some damage and we can auto attack and all of that does some damage. But come on. 
Hopefully the enemy team pushing right into me here. Actually, they decided to back up pretty hard. Tassadar with the wall is trying to keep me in this location. Medivh thinking about poking in there. Nova and Malfurion and Gazlo were above us at the start of that flame cast, but unfortunately we're not going to be able to connect with anyone there. Gazlo does have the top hat, is trying to retreat back to safety right now. We lose one of our armor plates to the tower's damage there. One thing that could really help Deathwing is just having some kind of setup on your team, some kind of CC. In some of my practice games, we actually ended up getting a large amount of Kira's game after game after game. And that was actually so fun to play off of. When Kira goes in with the lasso, we just start to, you know, shoot the giant waves of fire towards our adversaries. And it was so very effective bottom lane has been taken by the enemy team let's try to send out some fire here on malfurion we do pick up two kills one on gaslo as well down in the bottom lane medivh is fighting with tassadar but it looks like he's actually winning that fight pushing medivh or pushing tassadar out of lane now if he can go back and take that i can get this and it looks like he's on his way now only nova for the enemy team still remaining i did go for the cataclysm at level 10 this is going to allow us to get reset that's on our ult ability. Oh yeah, they got that, no problem. Whenever a building dies. So I could use my R to dive this building. My R would kill that building and then I could use my R to get out again. Deathwing does get this ability at level one, although it does come with a cooldown initially that you kind of have to wait through, but then it's gonna be available throughout the rest of the game. The other talent choice at level 10 is really good and should definitely be considered. What it does is a, after a small delay, channels a fear around Deathwing that can totally discombobulate your enemies, sending them walking all over the place. In my previous match, the, my warm up game getting ready for this, there was a butcher on the enemy team, and basically I just feared him every single time that he walked in. This team fight still continuing here. The dragon with just a little bit of health remaining. You know what? Why don't we just tell this guy to fuck off? Tell that guy to fuck off and beat up this healer who's now alone. <laughs> There's only damage on our team that followed up there at all was our Medivh. I see you, Medivh. Thank you for trying. Tassadar walking away in a straight line. That potentially could have been a good fire breath there. We also have a potentially good one here on Gazlo that was channeling in the bush. I can get out of this pretty easy. I'm just going to use Cataclysm to jump over the wall. If he wants to chase after me now, he's got fire damage to walk through. And it, oh, at least a decoy walk through then my plan was to move down here and hopefully finish off this building but i don't think we're going to have quite enough minion support for that let's go ahead and fly up into the sky get our health back get that last armor plate back as well mediv scouting this out a little bit we can use our see how i could actually see gazla there but i couldn't drop the meteor on him there's some weird line of stuff like that that could like frustrations on this character could just be alleviated by letting you cast your e wherever you want do you really need to see where the meteor falls? Meteors hit Earth all the time, and we don't know where they came from. Falling in on Gazlo yet again, we do have the monstrosity for the enemy team's Abathur at our side too. I'm losing armor plates fast, and I hope my team comes to help sometime soon. Uh, let's try to channel into Gazlo here. He is going to step out of it, and I am forced to back up. Actually going to die to the monstrosity, and it's situations like that on Deathwing that I'm just like... How is this okay? How is that? It was a fucking Gazlo. I'm supposed to be a god. I'm Deathwing. Good. Good, good, good um, stasis there from Medivh, stopping Malfurion from being able to do anything else. But yet again, our team not really moving up and capitalizing on those opportunities to deal damage. Ping's going down on the bottom mercenary camp right now. Let's go ahead and pick up Conflagurate. Dealing 600 damage with Molten Flame to an enemy within four seconds causes them to burn for more damage. And then they start popping like popcorn. It's actually pretty fun to see. Uh, Malfurion was just spotted in the middle lane, and I don't know where the rest of his team is. Uh, they did get some mercenary camps up top. We do see Gazel pushing top right now as well. So we're going to fall in here. We are going to play this pretty safe, I think. Just put flame down when we can. Not overcomplicate this at all. 
If I can defend this, great. If I cannot, hey, it wasn't meant to be, you know? It wasn't meant to be. Gazel has taken a little bit of damage from the tower now. As I still struggle to finish off simple minions on one of the most devastating characters in WoW lore. Get out of here. Oh, God. Hard day's work, but you know what? We cleared out the top lane, boys. Looks like the friendly team going for another cap up top. I'm going to head to middle for yet another quick capture. Hopefully we can finish off middle with this one. Nice try with the polymorph. I see you. Uh, one thing we might want to consider here is just going in with Cataclysm. This is pretty close to the building. So if we can finish off the building, I get another cast of it, which I could then use to Cataclysm again. However, I think what I'm going to do is just since we secured the dragon, I'm going to take a quick second to just heal up really fast, drop some meteors on Nova decoys. Even though it's a decoy, it does heal me for, what is it, 3%? 3% per? Yeah. That talent is really great on interrupting channels on Towers of Doom or the uh, Garden Terror map, stuff like that, where you can actually stop someone from getting an objective. Uh, that 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 talent is really good. I don't want to sound like I'm just shooting all over Deathwing, because, I mean, I do like the character. And while I did definitely prefer his melee playstyle significantly more than whatever this is, I have found myself actually having some fun here or there. After the initial shock of revisiting this character, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, fuck yes. Eat this shit, Gasol, I'm going in. <laughs> Get this fucking building out of here. Uh, let's just sidestep that really fast. Unfortunately, that was a really good play from Nova, trying to remove our minions here to thwart our push a little bit. Yo, I see you, Nova. I see the brain working. I appreciate it. Um, I'm, I am going to start to back up here. I am a little worried about my well-being. Because we can't be healed, I feel like there's this really weird balance on Deathwing, kind of similar to Chen. You know how Chen kind of always has to play tank for his team in quick match, even though he's a bruiser? I feel like the same thing happens to Deathwing. Because his health pool is so high, you're kind of expected to be the one that goes in and takes all the brunt of the damage, but you're actually relatively squishy, especially without our level one talent, without Draconic Might, your armor plates can just be shredded so fast. It's an absolute joke. Still trying to macro here with the help. Avala, I was gonna say, let's see if we can kill any minions with our Q now that we're level 19. Look at this team, we're doing it. I do like having the global because it does let me kind of look at the entire map. You guys know how much of a sucker I am for macro and actually soaking XP. That's kind of fun. There is a little mini game you can play with the meteor where you last hit minions while you're just kind of waiting for your armor plates to come back. If you get the final blow with your meteor when you're in the sky, you uh, get the XP for the kill, whereas if you, you know, just damage it while you're in the sky, it's going to drop the XP orb. So if you can last hit the minion with it, that could be pretty good. We do manage to get top. I'm going to go for a fast channel here and then try to fly down to my team in the bottom lane. I should be able to start my fly channel right now. You have to be out of combat for a few seconds to be able to do that. Actually, I'm just going to fly middle and we'll take dragon over there. As soon as I can drop, here we go. Boom! I got it! Uh, and we should be able to go straight to core with this. 40 seconds or so before the enemy team starts to respawn. Abathur also dead at this point as well. Is pretty good. Uh, I'm heading straight for the core. We still have two members of our friendly team sieging bottom. You hate to see it, but that's okay. We're doing the right thing, and we know it unfortunately my hero damage was pretty low in this game i didn't actually get to breathe fire on that many heroes i tried practicing with the melee build for deathwing um i think we tried two games of it on stream and it just felt terrible uh the better coordinated your team is the more damage you're going to be able to get off with the flame breaths and enemies can pop quite well with that they can do a lot of damage if you can catch someone in some of these small walkways, especially, you know, around this map. If you can catch them around that middle jungle area, you really can do a lot of damage 
to enemy combatants. Uh, this game, I just played the objective really well. <laughs> so we didn't have to do any of that. I was trying really hard to just make sure we got Dragonite every time it was up. There is zero talent diversity with Deathwing. It's actually really sad to see. The If you look at his hero's profile stuff, you pick one of two talents at level one, one of two talents at level seven. You can change your level 10. But other than that, these icons are going to look really familiar to you. Draconic Might, Infernus, Skyfall, Burn Beneath My Shadow. And like I said, the fear is fine. I just like getting resets off towers. I think that's really enjoyable. Wicked Inferno, Conflagration, and Stood in the Fire. Thank you guys so much for watching. I didn't record the intro for this video yet, so I have to go do that. <laughs> Goodbye.